Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's class. As all of you are aware of the live courses for RBI SEBI and Nagas, as well as our mobile application. So let's begin with the first question. Who is the author of From Independence to Self Reliance: Mapping India's Rise as a Global Superpower? So you would know that this book is aptly uh, describing the present situation, the present economic stance of the government of India, that is moving to self-reliance. Now, who is uh, the author of this book? The author is Jamal Jamal. Okay, so he is a former governor of RBI. And his position, his experience as the governor of RBI makes the book all the more important. So if you really want to know and know the perspective of the government behind the self reliance and the steps that the government is taking so you can read this book if you have time okay this is a uh, very interesting now as far as the books are concerned only the author and the name of the book is important but since we are talking about a very important person so we need to discuss a bit about him as well so guys besides being the former governor of RBI, this person has held a very very important position that is that he was the chairman of the committee on economic capital framework which was created by the ministry of finance in 2018 and the basic agenda of his committee was to decide on the surplus which RBI should shift to the central government okay it's like a dividend which RBI need to pay to the uh, to the central government so this committee was created so that the amount of the dividend can be decided it's the correct term for that is surplus but i'm using dividend for your understanding okay so that's the basic premise and this committee has recommended various uh, amounts various percentages as well to the RBI for its different buffers and provisions and right now we cannot delve into that because we cannot devote the entire video on this news itself because it is not a new current affair it has been there and I have covered it extensively in the committee's document guys so you can download the committee's document from the strategic course of yours from there the, the do, download the document and cover the entire now as far as the allocation of amount is concerned so RBI has allocated 99,122 crores in 2020-2021 okay and if you see the trend so this was the trend and when the people's Jalan committee gave its recommendation you can clearly see the staff increase in the amount uh, which is to be shifted to the central government and here are the percentages like Bimal Jalan committee recommended RBI to maintain 5.5% uh, to 6.5% of its assets as surplus. okay. Now RBI used to maintain approximately 28% of uh, its assets value as the uh, provision and the government felt that it is too high therefore the, they constituted the committee on economic capital. Frame. Now here again we have certain percentages. The next percentage is 6.5 percent. At 6.5 percent, surplus reserves would be 11,608 crores. At 5.5 percent, the figure would be this. Okay, so this is not very important, but this uh, percentage is important. I hope that this would have helped you in revising the Bhimal Jalan committee's recommendation and if you haven't read it even once then it is my suggestion that you should all read the Bhimal Jalan committee recommendation and there is a specific video on YouTube by Amatsar himself on this committee's recommendation itself. Okay. Now this is a picture. Now first of all remember that this has been taken from the Times of India article of June 17, 2021. So the percentages are subject to change. Now, as far as the FY20 uh, allocation or transfer from the central bank to the government is concerned, you can clearly see Singapore has transferred the highest amount, highest percentage of its GDP, amount which is equivalent to the percentage of its GDP to the central government. And if we see India, then it has held the fourth position as far as the transfers are concerned, transfers from the central bank to the central government. So that is also an important fact and we have discussed it as well. Now in FY21, then 2020 to 2021, then 99,122 crores per month. So at that position, India was at the second position. India has taken the position 
Okay, so the next question is who has won the US bank picks? So here, next first one is the right answer and he is the Belgian Dutch motorsport pick. Question number three is who has won the Melt Water Champions Chess Tournament 2022? So here guys, Daniel Thousand is the right answer. He is a Norwegian and this is a very, no, very well known fact that he is a very, very depth player and he has won this challenge. Now when many a time with, when we talk about chess, we come across the word Grandmaster. So what is Grandmaster? Grandmaster is basically a title which a chess player gets when he or she has scored a certain level of points. For example, if the level is set at 2500 TNO points. So anybody who is reaching that rating, who has scored these many points, that person would be classified as a Grandmaster. So India's first male Grandmaster was Shunakana and first female Grandmaster was S. Vijay Lakshmi. She became the first female Grandmaster in 2000. The latest Grandmasters is this person Pranavana. He is the 76th Grandmaster of India and this is Priyanka Nuthi. She is the 23rd female Grandmaster of India. Okay. Now coming to the next question. Which country has won the Denmark Open Badminton Tournament 2022? So here, usually what we see, whenever we talk about any tournament, we see that individuals win the championship. But here we are talking about the country. So guys, yes, both the singles, single matches have been won by the people from China. Therefore, China is the country which has won the badminton tournament. Uh, so men's tournament has been won by Shi Yuki. And women's tournament has been won by He Bing Jia. Jia. The next question is which is the best performing state under the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Urban for the year 2021? So here, guys, the best performing state is Uttar Pradesh. Okay. So here, what is the news? The news is that under the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Urban, the awards were given to the states for their performance. Okay, now before discussing the award, I want to te tell you about certain, uh, tell you certain facts about the scheme. First of all, the scheme was launched in 2015 for a period uh, till August 2022. Okay, for a period of approximately seven years, right? Then it has been extended till December 2024. The purpose of this extension is to complete the sanctioned houses. Okay, so there is a number of, uh, there is a certain number, okay, of houses which was sanctioned uh, at the time of its launch and that number is 1.128. So these many houses will be developed under the Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana Urban from this period to this time period. Okay, but right now what we are seeing that the houses have not been constructed, the uh, sanctioned houses have not been completed, therefore, the time limit has been extended. So keep these facts in your mind because these are very, very important and relevant facts. On that note, tell me what is the outlay of the scheme. Now, let's discuss about the award. First of all, remember these awards are the award for the year 2021. Okay? That's the following state. Uttar Pradesh has performed the best, bestest of the best. Because it is at the first. Rank second, Madhya Pradesh, rank third, Tamil Okay. Now remember these are the awards. But even in the awards, we are ranking the states. Okay. This is how the PIB has presented the news. And this is how I am delivering the news. Otherwise, I don't understand why are the rankings given in the award categories. But still, nevertheless, it's the government of India. So we have to exceed to it a bit. So remember, rank one Madhya Pradesh, rank two Madhya Pradesh, rank three Tamil Nadu in the category of best performing state. Now, best state for implementation of credit link subsidy scheme. So, rank one is Gujarat. Best performing state in the Northeast, Tripura. Northeast and East India. That much is sufficient for the awards and the scheme. Now, related to the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs only, there is one more news, and the news is that it has organized the Indian Housing Conclave in Rajput. Okay. So this is uh, an important news, Dutch Court will organize and this is the third event in the series of events which include 
your global housing technology challenge india and your indian housing technology mela which was held in 2019 and 2021 respectively okay so i hope you can remember this fact as well now the question number six is which edition of the international lead poisoning prevention week was observed in 2021 so it is the 10th edition of this week which was observed and the dates are these october 23 to 29 the theme is say no to lead poisoning a very easy theme to remember right now guys like recently there is a report on the prevalence of lead poisoning in india so we are discussing about this lead prevention week why not discuss about this report which was released in the month of october itself so we are going to delve into this report for a little bit uh, for a little while and then we will move on now this report has been released by the biology and resource institute and uh, it has organized a seminar on understanding lead poisoning prevalence in india in new delhi in collaboration with pure at the same seminar, Niti Aayog and CSIR have released the assessment of lead impact on human and India's response. So basically, the seminar was organized and during the seminar, this report was discussed. It highlights were discussed. Now, what are the highlights? According to the report, India accounts for the world's highest health and economic burden due to the lead poisoning. 26% of the global death are caused by the lead exposure in India. Besides, 15% of children have elevated uh, lead levels globally and lead is very lethal for the brain. Okay, So, it is something that needs to be taken care of by the government and the parents also because we need to ensure the proper nutrition of the children and at the same time, the responsibilities of the government should be fulfilled. Okay, because lead is consumed by the people not only from the environment but from the food and water itself, so that needs to be taken care of. 23 states in India have higher blood lead levels than the average of 5 microgram per deciliter and 4.9 microgram per deciliter for children less than 2 years old. This is guys, the standard, the benchmark. Now, the people have higher lead levels then the benchmark. Now what you need to remember? The benchmarks. Benchmarks can be asked. Then we have the Pradesh, the Pradesh, Jharkhand, and Chhattisgarh, and Pradesh come for the highest average blood lead levels more than 7 microgram per deciliter. Okay. So these are the states which are accounting for the highest blood. Then 40% of India's population with poor health indicators resides in these population, uh, in these states. And India uses dollar two thirty six billion in GDP. That is five percent of the total GDP due to the lead poisoning in children. And this is a very key statement. Okay, so this statement should be uh, me memorized by you if you have any exam coming up. Right now, even if you don't have any exam coming up, this is Aniti Ayog's report. So you can clearly remember this fact as your static fact. You can use it in your ESI answers as well. The question number seven is, on which day is the World Sustainability Day observed? So guys, it is observed on the fourth Veterans Day of October. Okay, so this fell on October 26 this year, right? And 17 Sustainable Development Goals are there in the world. And so you have memorized all the 17 goals because this is very basic, okay? You sh should be aware of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals if you are an aspirant of any examination. The next question is Sandeep Bakshi is the MD and CEO of which bank? So he is the MD and CEO of ICICI Bank. Recently he has been reappointed as the bank's MD and CEO for a period of three years. Now your task is to tell, tell me the timeline of this bank. Okay. Question number nine. Recently Novartis AG has signed a voluntary agreement license with the generic drug maker in Dash middle income nations to produce the leukemia treatment drug named Nilothmetinin. Uh, okay, so here the right answer is uh, guys, seven. Okay, with seven Middle East com uh, middle income nations, this company has signed the agreement. Now, what is the meaning of this agreement? 
the basic meaning is that now these countries can also develop can also manufacture this drug nilotin which is a drug against the leukemia which is a kind of cancer okay which is a cancer basically so this drug can now be created can now be manufactured by the uh, countries okay which country so the answer is egypt guatemala and Indo indonesia morocco pakistan philippines Tunisia. So these countries can develop this nilotin. Okay, and this is the first time this kind of an agreement has been signed, wherein this company is assigning the role of manufacturing this drug in the home countries. The last question is which IIT has collaborated with NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory researchers to study the interactions between microbes in the international space station so here i think madras is the right and it is a very basic news guys we don't have to uh, cram our minds with this news because nothing is there it's just a collaboration and these two organizations are going to study the microbes on the international space station now the, the fact that we need to focus on firstly is the launch year of alex 1998 and I hope all of you are aware that in 2031 it is going to be commissioned. Okay. Total 15 countries have started the ISS and right now there are two uh, space stations in space. One is the ISS by all the countries, all the 15 members and it is largely used by the many countries. Okay. Many countries in the world. The second is by China. Yangon is China's Space station. Because China was not allowed any participation in the space station, international space station, so that is the fact. Okay, now let's move on to the second question. Now, here I would like to end this video. It was a very short, crisp video, but I hope you have liked the content. And if you really have liked the content, then do mention the answer of the questions in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video.